Hi, welcome to another video from Man and Machine. My name's Sean, I'm one of the CAD CAM engineers here, and today we're going to be having a look at 3 plus 2, 5 axis simultaneous, and 4 axis wrapped. Now, this isn't going to be a deep dive into exactly how to set everything up, we're just going to throw some toolpaths onto this part um, and show you the capabilities of the software. Let's go ahead and add our setup. So, for this, the only thing I'll really say about this is to use the pivot point of your machine, for setting your axes. I'm going to assume that I've set this to zero. I've machined this round to the same size. So we've got our setup now. Now let's have a look at adding some toolpaths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine this surface here. I'm going to machine this with a horizontal, and then I'll machine the surface down here with a ball nose. Let's click horizontal. I'm going to choose the tool I want to use, which is a 6mm flat. Now, the only thing I need to do is turn on my tool orientation and choose. I always choose the surface I'm going to be machining just to make sure that the tool is uh, normal to that surface. So I'm going to choose this surface here. Come over to my heights and I'm going to choose, when using horizontal, I like to use my heights to determine what parts of the model I want to be machining. So I'm going to say, don't go any lower than this, which means it won't machine this face down here. We'll try and pick up any points that it might see over this flat here. So let's accept that. There we have a 3 plus 2 toolpath. And it really is that easy with 3 plus 2. If you can work in 3 axis, you can work in 3 plus 2 just by orientating the machine around and using that tool orientation. So let's go ahead and do um, a scallop this time. So for this, I'm going to choose a form of ball nose. I'll change my tool orientation again. This time I'm going to choose the flat at the bottom. Because I want the tool to be normal to this, if it's not so much normal to this, these side walls are more likely to be normal to this bottom face than the other top face. Not always, but more than likely. More so a case of choose an appropriate face that you want to machine to with your tool. That's the um, point I'm trying to get across. So I'm going to choose a selection boundary. I'm going to say, I'm going to select around here. Now there are a few ways to control this bottom hit. I can do it between two contours. I could say avoid touch. My favourite one is heights again. Select this surface and say stay off that surface by 05. Um, I'm also going to choose this top surface, so selection. I'm going to say that's my top surface. Tool center, I want no overlap. And I'm going to say 0 0.1 step down. I also like no contact. I'm also going to add an entry point. So let's have a look at an entry point. I'm going to say, please start. Yeah. As you can see, we've got quite a nice toolpath here. It's going to be our contour. I can simulate these. Let's have a look at simulation. Post simulation. Simulate here. We have to turn off the stock though, because obviously we've machined, we've machined, and you're going to get lots of collisions down here because it's hitting this, it's seeing that it's hitting this stock, which it is because we haven't roughed it out. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and play that. As we can see, our model should be set in the machine this way. It's tipped it up and it's now machining it in a 3 plus 2 capacity. As you can see, there's our facing. Let's skip along that. Speed this up. Maybe not that much. Let's slow down a bit. As you can see, it's now machining essentially in three axes, but but at a different tool orientation. So that's pretty much three plus two. Um, tool orientation is very good in this. Um, as you can see, it's very simple to use. You just turn it on, set your z-axis, um, set your x-axis, and it's done. And you're working back in three three axes essentially. Now let's go ahead and add a 5 axis toolpath. So, not really a lot to do. So, I've got this chamfer here that I can do a 5 axis simultaneous. I mean, just do it with a chamfer tool or a spot drill. But for this instance, we're going to do it with an end mill. So, let's click Swarf. I'm going to go into my tool and I'm going to choose this 4mm end mill. In my geometry tab, it's asking for some surfaces. Now, there are a few ways to do this. We can do it with contours, surfaces, faces, contour pairs or manual. Contours and faces is default. And I like the default because it is very simple to use. Click a surface and it will try and join up the rest of the surface you want it to join up to. Which is pretty much what we wanted to do. If we wanted to just do just that surface, I would use um, 
contours and then just do contour pairs and edit the contours but for this instance doing what we've done here it's worked perfect for what we want the only thing is to add is a little bit of tool or off offset and that's just going to push the tool past the bottom of the line then I'm just going to accept it now there aren't now HTM is not a full five axis simultaneous program like power mill but the options it does give you are very user friendly so we've got Swarf and multi-axis Swarf will use the side of the tool to machine the area we want so we can simulate from here see my tool's not quite long enough but so it's using the side of the tool to machine this and let's offset that tool um, multi-axis contour will use the tip of the tool and machine from as you can see from the image that's popped up we use the tip of the tool so when doing like scribe lines or something like that um, you'd use five axis contour when doing chamfers or sidewalls and stuff where you want the tool to be um, sideways cutting with the side of the tool let me use swarf so it's not a lot of five axis tool pass but they're very easy and very um, simple to use um, very good for what they are. Um, very easy to set up a swarf toolpath in HSM um, in comparison to some other 5-axis um, CAM programs that I've used. So now let's have a quick look at 4-axis wrapped and we'll do a drilling and we'll pattern it around as well because it's essentially the same as 4-axis. So let's go ahead and look at 4-axis wrapped. So I'm going to use a 2D contour for this. I'm going to pick the tool which is this formula flat. Now in my Geometry, I now want to say it's a wrap, so using tool orientation, and I'm going to say it's a wrap tool process. It's now asking me a cylinder. Now, wrapped currently only works around cylinders, um, so we have to use either like a cylinder to rotate around. So, I'm going to choose the surface that I'm going to be machining because that is a cylinder, and then I'm going to choose my contour. And as I choose my contour, you'll see the contour wraps around. Now, if I turn off this, it sort of thinks that's what you're trying to do, but it can't do it without the wrap cylinder. Turn this off, it's a line. Turn on wrapped, it's like, I think this is what you want to do. Is this the cylinder you want? You click it and it says, okay, yep, I know what you want to do now. A little bit deep divey again, but it's fine. Um, my pass is fine, I'm not change anything else. Just going to accept it. As we can see, we have a wrapped toolpath. Again, I'll simulate this. As we can see, the tool is now, it's a bit quick, let me turn it down a bit. The tool is now going to follow along with the flat of the actual surface we've chosen and the contour we've chosen as well. So it's now wrapping that toolpath around that. And again, obviously, you could use this on a 5 axis machine or even just a 4 axis machine. So there it is wrapped. Now, the last thing, we're just going to draw this hole and we'll pan it around to show you the fact that we can pattern around a four axis as well. So we'll click drill. Fortunately I haven't done this drill is 5.1. Geometry, we're going to use tool orientation this time. Select it, check our Z, flip our Z. Select our hole. We can see that we've got our tool path. We're just going to drill it for now. There is our drilled hole. Our last thing to do is to pattern it around. And this works the same way as doing a pattern inside of um, the modeling space. So we click pattern, choose what type of pattern, I'm going to circular, I'm going to choose around this face. I happen to know it's minus 200, and there are five holes. Let's accept that. And as we can see, we've still got our single, our single hole. But it's now patterned it round. So again, simulate this from a front view. You can see it's now going to pattern around our holes. We can't do multiple selections, uh, multiple tool orientations. Um, so to do something like these, that's the best way of doing it. Doing a single one, finding out the pitch and pitching it around using a pattern. Um, I hope that's answered any 5-axis questions you have. If it hasn't answered all of your questions, please feel free to contact us here at Man and Machine. Um, I'll leave all our contact details up at the end of this video. Um, we can come do um, on-site live demos and or um, remote demos, depending on yours and our availabilities. Um, other than that, thank you for watching, and let the chips fly.